Greetings hobbyists, this is Arsans of Vool. In this video we're going to have a look at how we can use geometry nodes to procedurally create more detailed Teruges. So in a previous video we had a look at how to make Teruges, that was what I'd say is a more basic video. It looks at how we can do that in two different methods, either using planes or we had these ones over here using curves and it talks about the positives and negatives of each of those. Now in today's video what we're going to have a look at is a more detailed version of this curves option but we're also going to add geometry nodes to it which means that you can have it automatically place all of these things like these endpoints or all of your rivets and you can still move it around and it will automatically put those in the correct place for you so that you don't need to worry about where they're going I mean that's obviously far too long but you get the idea it makes it really easy to move things around and you get everything done in one go and you can just copy that over and then you can start moving things around and it will automatically create all of the things that you want so you can start moving all of your bits around and they will do whatever you want them to do you can twist them turn them for example and you've got all of that already sorted so that you can do that however you want it to be. The other thing that's great about this is you can go into the geometry nodes and you can change things. For example, I've already set this up so that I can come in and I can change, for example, that triangle at the bottom to be something like this symbol. And if I wanted to, I could also come and change, let's say, for example, these rivets to instead be something like a spiky rivet. So it makes for some great options if you want to be able to change your models around really quick. So what I'm going to do is just delete everything that's not part of this tutorial just to make everything easy to see and let's move that over and what I'm actually going to do as well is I'm going to just recreate this rectangle that we use as the fill shape just so I can cover a little bits which were covered in the other video so I will go through these fairly quickly. So we need to have a fill shape and it needs to be a curve so I'm going to shift a curve and I'm going to go to a rectangle. If you don't have that rectangle option you just need to go to edit preferences type in curve and select the extra curve objects so what I'm going to do is just move that whole thing to the side and then I'm going to go into edit mode again and then S and then Y somewhere around there and then S and then X so we've got that a bit smaller and importantly I need to come over to my object data properties which is just here and then on the geometry I need to change the fill mode from both to none that's really important then control and A and I'm going to apply the scale and at this point, we can just bring in our curve to start working with. So curve, and then I'm going to use a Bezier curve. Now, if we come into edit mode, sometimes it's useful to see what direction this is going in. If you can't, click to here, and then you can click normals, and you've got your direction here. So that's A, R, and then move that on the y-axis by 90. And then let's move those somewhere around here. And let's just E to extrude that out a bit further. And we can sort of, we've got a good curve here. Let's R to rotate that round. And then let's rotate that around that way. And we've got a decent curve here. So we can sort of talk about some important points that I don't want people to get confused on. Now looking at that, that actually needs to be a lot bigger. So let's scale that up to somewhere around there. And then Control and A and apply the scale. And we can start making our geometry nodes. So first thing to do is drag up. So we've got this here for our geometry nodes. If you don't, then click there and then go to geometry node editor. And we're going to click new. And then if you ever get it so you can't find your nodes, just press A and then full stop on the number pad. And then it will zoom to them. I guess that's a decimal point actually, not a full stop. But either way, you get the idea. Now, we need to do some things to make this work, and we're going to set this up sort of from the very beginning to work with what we're doing later. And that involves a couple of little extra bits. So we'll talk about that as we go. First thing, let's get this curve looking right. So we want to make it so that we've got our Tarouge using this as the fill shape. If you want it so that you don't have to keep clicking back on and off, if you just click that pin button, that will stay there. So I'm going to shift an A and I'm going to curve to mesh bring that in there and then we need to select our rectangle that we've just got there i guess we could rename that but i'm not going to bother for now and plug that into the profile curve and we've got that there now this does look like we haven't scaled something but we know we have so i'm just going to double check on those yeah so what you can do is come into edit mode a alt and s and then that allows you to scale this down as well now you've got your mean radius here if you put that to one that should now be a copy of that object here so it is but you'll notice it is now facing the wrong way don't worry about that for now but if you've got that issue 
mean radius to 1 and it will now be exactly the right size. We also want to fill our caps so those are filled on the end and you'll notice this is curving in slightly a different way. We're sort of going to resolve this in a second so don't worry about that for now. Now what we're going to need to do for a later part is we're going to need to make sure that at this point we've only got one, two, three points, but we're going to need more points so that we can put these rivets on. So I want to control an A and I'm going to resample my curve and I'm going to plug that in here so that we've got that good to go. And you'll notice that's going to make it a little bit more boxy. So we just need to put that count up as high as we want, though normally I do this by length. I'm going to leave it as count just for now so that as we change it to length later, you can see the reason for that. And then for each of these, so A, I'm going to press Control and T just so I can rotate this round to where we want it. So we want it to there. So at this point, we're looking fairly good to go. Let's end to get rid of that M panel and we can see where we've got everything. So fairly easy to make this shape. We've now got to add in our studs. To do that, we're going to want a little bit more space. So I'm just going to zoom out slightly on the geometry nodes and let's drag that out a bit. So we've got a bit more room over here. Now we're going to need a join geometry node because we're going to need to have these together on the same mesh. So let's just plug that in there, ready to go. And we're going to bring out this resample curve and we're going to want to instance on each of these points. So let's drag that out and instance on points. Got that there, and then let's start looking at this. So what we need to do is have our object that we're going to instance. So I'm just going to pick one of these. Let's go with our pointed rivet so it gives us something to explain and make sure you understand in case you just don't want something that's round. I'm just going to plug that geometry into instance, and then we need to plug that instance into the join geometry so we can see it. And if I shift and Z, you can see where this is. And we've got, well, a lot of these. So we're going to have some problems to deal with here. Let's just handle each of these problems one at a time. So the first is that we've got a slight issue. If I go into edit mode, G, and move this around, you'll notice that we don't keep a consistent distance between these points. And that's because there's always going to be, well, in this instance, a count of 21. So let's change this so it's not a count. Instead, we want to do it by length. And suddenly we've got lots and lots. Let's reduce that length. So we've got that somewhere around there. There's still too many, but we're going to deal with that later. One problem at a time, guys. And then finally, we can see that everything is well just pointing in the same direction. That's what we're going to deal with first. It's relatively simple to sort out. We can just use this rotation. So what we want to do is have it rotate. And we're going to have it rotate basically sticking out in this direction. And that's relatively easy to do because it is the normal direction of the curve. So I'm going to shift an A and I'm going to type in normal. So we've now got the normal direction. That will be of the curve or the point that it's being instanced to. And then we just need to change that so we can use it as a rotation. If I plug this in here, it's just going to, well, it's a mess. So let's not do that. What we're going to do is we need to align the Euler to the vector. Notice we've got it going into the vector, not the rotation, importantly. Plug that in there. And now at the moment, we've got everything going on. Well, the X of the normal, we want it going in the Z. And now everything is pointing in the correct direction. So we can see that there. But our studs don't seem to be coming out very far. I mean, you might want this. That's totally fine. But we probably, in fact, let's have a look at this. If I change this to the round rivet, you can see we can't even see this. It's too far inside. So back to the point, we do want to make these so they're further out. And this is the other reason why this align Euler to vector is really important. Otherwise, if you didn't have this, even for the round one, when you try to move this out, it will actually all just move. Let's say if you did it in the Z direction, everything would just move well up. And we don't want that. We need to move it outwards in the direction of the normal. Hence having that rotation. Oh, I just think I managed to delete that by pressing undo. So that was very smooth. OK, back to where we should be. So. What we're going to do is we're going to move this. We are going to transform these points. But because they are instances, they each have their own individual now normal direction. They're pointing all in different directions. If we have a look at that, we don't use our transform geometry. Instead, we use translate instances, plug that in there. And now we can move this, for example, everything on the Z. And you'll notice that it moves with the direction of the curve. So it's going to move correctly. So we've got something that looks about right there. So that is how we're going to be able to translate and control our instances. 
Now, let's deal with our other problem of we've got far too many of them. Just gonna move everything down there. Now, the obvious way to try and deal with this too many of them is that we could reduce, oh, that's gone to count instead of length again because I did that undoing, is we could just bring down our length until we've got something about where we want our studs. But that has the obvious problem that now our terouge is, well, really angular. So we definitely don't want that. Let's bring that up so it's nice and smooth again. So how are we going to do this? What we're going to do is actually tell Blender to only put one of these on every, well, however many points we want. We can do that using the selection section of our instances and points. It tells Blender to only do it every so often. Now, luckily, all of these points effectively get given a number. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so on. And we call this the index. So I'm just going to bring in the index node and then for our selection what we want to do is say do every let's say fifth or sixth or whatever and there's a math node for this usefully so I'm just going to bring in a math node and we're going to change that to the modulo node which is there and what that does is that has a value so just here and if I bring that into our selection and put this to any value that isn't one this will work so I'm going to put this to two just to demonstrate the point so what this is now doing in fact actually better do it to three just to explain what's going on so what this is doing is going well here's one here's two here's three ignore that one two third ignore that one two third ignore that we don't want it to ignore the third one we want it to actually well be the third one that's the whole point of this so what we need to do is use some boolean math so i'm just going to type in boolean go to boolean maths and we want to have a not function if i bring that in there it effectively does the opposite so originally it was showing everything but the third one now it's only showing the third one so now we can control this distance really easily by putting in three or four or five now importantly if we do this as anything that's not a whole number, so for example 5.1, it starts having issues because of the not function. So this is going to need to be a whole number. And if we wanted to, we could bring this out so that it comes part of the geometry node modifier, and that would make that easier to do. Let's put that back to 4 for now. Now the other problem with this is that at the moment that's going to work great, except for it's now got, well, a stud where there shouldn't be a stud at the top. And there's one at the bottom, so yeah, not great. But because this is a curve, and to make that clear, if we come out here, you'll notice this is being done from a split off before we've turned it to a mesh. This is why this is gonna work. So this is why the curve bit is important. What we can do, let me just drag this up, is we can actually say not to use the endpoints or to use the endpoints or not use the endpoints. However, we want to do it with our Boolean maths. So if I come into select or endpoint selection, we can say, do we want it on the start and the end? We want it on neither. Importantly, we're going to have to do some Boolean maths and say, we don't want this. So we're going to use a Boolean math as a not. So if I just put this in in place, you'll see what this does. It's basically just saying, don't do the beginning, don't do the end. So if I get rid of that, you can see what happened. But we need to effectively join both of these functions together. And again, you can use a Boolean maths by using an and and bring both of those in bring that to there and now we've got every four but we ignore the endpoints so that's how we're going to control our studs and what this means now is that if i do anything for example here and make this longer so just g and move it it will keep adding points but there'll be a nice consistent distance apart and if i do anything like control and t twist this around the studs stick pointing in the right direction so we've got everything working the way we want it to be. Now what this is going to do is this is actually going to make our last part. Let me just bring that here. I should say we do need to realize our instances. So realize instances, bring that in there as well. So this is going to be our studs. And we're going to want to join those. So Control and J. Let's just move that. And I'm going to press F2 and name that studs. And like I said, we can just change things out. So you can change a stud in from one thing to another. Now, I will just notice that when we've used these resample curves, you'll notice this has given this a bit of a excessively smooth texture. It looks a bit off. If you don't want that, and I think that is because of the resample curve. It might be the curve to mesh, actually, or it might be the join geometry. We're going to shift an A and add in a shade smooth. So set shade smooth. And interestingly, I know we're going to 
unset it shade smooth, but you click that in and then unclick that and it's gonna be unsmoothed. Yeah, that's weird. That's just the way you do it. And then again, I think this is looking less smooth than we want it, so let's up that length so it's much smoother, something like that. And then we want to change our amount of distance between our studs. So let's say six or let's try eight. There we go. So that's probably about right there. So you can control how smooth this is really easily and then just change everything with your geometry node for our modulo value. So yeah, looking about right. Now we just need to add on our endpoints. And actually, this is really, hopefully, sort of obvious for this point. All we need to do is effectively do exactly the same thing again. Except for this time, instead of having as many options here, we're just going to use less. So what I'm going to do is effectively grab all of that, Shift and D, and drag it down here. And all I'm going to do is get rid of, or actually let's rename this, so we'll call this end weight because these are two weigh the bits down and we can get rid of this modulo element we don't want that we're just going to select based on our end point so if i drag that in now what we're going to do is we're going to instance something just on the end and we're going to get rid of that instance being the rivet point i'm going to put the ultra symbol in there so at this point we just need to drag in our geometry from all the way there to say where to do it and we need to join this to our overall geometry at the end and we will have well some bits now obviously we don't want this aligned in this direction let's change that to x because we want it in the x direction so we've got that sorted at the moment we've got it in both so if i just zoom in here that is because we've got our endpoint selection being on the start and the end so let's get rid of that so let's change that to zero so we don't want it at the start we just want it at the end and now we've got our Truge set up so that it will automatically create these studs every so often and then create our omega symbol at the end. And if I want to duplicate this, I can just shift and D, make a copy and go into edit mode and start moving things around. Now, obviously you're gonna to want to be careful with this. We don't want to go too far. You want to keep it to the same approximate length there would be good if you could set a limit on that. I wonder if there's a way of doing that in the curve properties. If anyone knows how you can do that, that would be pretty sweet to be able to say, okay, I only do it this length. So there we have our procedural truges that we can just change really quickly and we're gonna get all of this automatically generated. If you found that useful, as always, it'd be really appreciated if you hit that like button. If you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel for more great content. And if you want this file, other great files, and to get these videos ahead of time and ad-free, you can head on over to the Patreon page. And any money given there helps support the channel even further. Have a great day, guys.